Joe Biden is now going after parents who speak out against critical race theory. A Facebook whistleblower makes stunning claims during Senate testimony. Plus, as Democrats struggle to do anything, where's Kamala Harris? All that and more, I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and his Department of Justice or Department of Injustice, because in a most stunningly anti-American action, Biden is targeting parents who increasingly have been speaking out against issues such as critical race theory and the overall push by the woke radical left to indoctrinate children rather than educate them. It is clear that education has been taken over by the left. There's no debate. We've seen survey after survey after survey, which show that professors are overwhelmingly liberal. The surveys indicate that virtually all political contributions from college professors go toward Democrats. In college and in high school and even lower, we are seeing curriculum designed to push a leftist anti-American agenda. And Joe Biden? wants to make sure that that agenda succeeds and that parents lose their First Amendment rights to protest. Here's a story. Days after a national organization representing school board officials lamented to the Biden administration about hate groups intimidating education officials, Attorney General Merrick Garland has directed the FBI to combat threats of violence against administrators. Without citing specific cases in a memorandum issued on Monday, Merrick Garland expressed concern about a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, and threats of violence against school administrators, board members, teachers, and staff who participate in the vital work of running our nation's public schools. Hate groups? Are you kidding me? What these left-wing school boards are worried about is not hate groups, it's concerned parents. Parents who have had enough with this anti-American curriculum that has clearly become a priority for the left ahead of things like math and science and English. Nowadays, even math is racist. But with the radical left and Joe Biden, it's people like this teacher and supportive parents who are the targets. It's not my intention to hurt anyone, but there are certain truths that we must face when ready. We condemn school policies like 8040 and 8035 because it will damage children, defile, defile the holy image of God. I love all of my students, but I will never lie to them regardless of the consequences. I'm a teacher, but I serve God first, and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa because it's against my religion, it's lying to a child, it's abuse to a child, and it's sinning against our God. That was a teacher who was suspended for saying that boys are boys and girls are girls. He became a target. Parents are now becoming targets, and it's clear that Joe Biden and the radical left want to put down any and all dissent. There is no free speech when it comes to the left. You either get on board with them or they will shut you down. Debate, discussion, dialogue, not a chance. The left doesn't want to debate critical race theory or the 1619 Project or boys competing in girls sports. They just want to force compliance upon us and those who speak out will now be targeted by the Biden administration. And here's the thing, not only is this un-American, Biden and the rest of the left aren't even consistent with how they apply their outrage. Recall the other day when Democrat Senator Kirsten Sinema was chased into a bathroom and harassed. She was recorded during the ordeal. The recording in a restroom is illegal. The harassment is illegal. It's intimidation, plain and simple. But here's Joe Biden addressing that situation. Joe Manchin had people on kayaks show up to his boat yell at him. Senator Sinema last night was chased into a restroom. Do you think that those tactics are crossing a line? I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Yes. Sir. Part of the process. Biden says he doesn't like those tactics, but it's part of the process and he's not going to do anything about it. Here's a reaction from Senator Mike Lee of Utah. 
it's absolutely galling in its refusal to acknowledge even a modicum of empathy for a member of the United States Senate, a member of his own party, by the way, who's having things happen to her that are not part of the process, it is not part of the process to assault a person like that, to go into a restroom with someone, filming them, and for him to defend this in any way, shape, or form as part of the process is absurd. So here's what's important to take away from this story. On the one hand, Democrat Kirsten Cinema is standing in the way of the radical left agenda. So threats and intimidation and illegal actions are just part of the process. However, if you are a concerned parent speaking out on the indoctrination of your own child, then that is not part of the process. And Joe Biden and his administration will protect those school board members from you. It's a massive overreach by the federal government who has no business getting involved in the affairs of local government. Yet nothing, free speech, debate, the Constitution, nothing matters to the radical left except winning. And Joe Biden is using the weight of the government to intimidate and silence people. All right, so next let's talk about Facebook and the stunning whistleblower testimony. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, so next let's talk about Francis Haugen, who is the Facebook whistleblower who testified before the Senate on Tuesday with inside knowledge of the inner workings of Facebook, the internal studies that show Facebook knows the dangers of its platform, the obvious bias of the company, and the complete lack of accountability that starts at the top. Haugen was profiled this past weekend by CBS's 60 Minutes program. On Tuesday, Haugen appeared before the Senate Commerce, Science, and Transportation Subcommittee. And here's the story. Haugen, a former civic project manager for Facebook's misinformation team who leaked internal corporate documents to the Wall Street Journal for a series of damning reports against the social media giant, told lawmakers Tuesday that she believes her former employer is a national security issue. Haugen also asserted that Facebook has not only known its platform causes harm to U.S. security interests and to the well-being of minors using the platform, but that the site relies on negative interactions to drive engagement. Pretty tough words, but we need to keep in mind the full story here, and the other side of it has been expressed really well by journalist Glenn Greenwald. Fox News did a report on Greenwald's latest column in which Greenwald warns us that Democrats are embracing Haugen and this anti-Facebook sentiment, not because they want to bring down the tech giant, but because they want to force Facebook to do even more censorship. Here's more. Congress has taken no steps to curb the influence of these Silicon Valley giants because Facebook and Google drown the establishment wings of both parties with enormous amounts of cash and pay well-connected lobbyists who are friends and former colleagues of key lawmakers to use their DC influence to block reform, Greenwald wrote. With the exception of a few stalwarts, neither party's ruling wing really has any objection to this monopolistic power as long as it is exercised to advance their own interests. Pretty interesting comments, and I would agree with them. The Republican establishment is just as bad as the Democrats. Rather than standing up for what is right, they just follow the money and power. But with the Democrats in control, Greenwald says that they see Facebook as a means to more power. Agitating for more online censorship has been a leading priority for the Democrat Party ever since they blamed social media platforms for the 2016 defeat of the rightful heir to the White House throne, Hillary Clinton, he wrote. This craving for censorship has been elevated to an even more urgent priority for their corporate media allies due to the same belief that Facebook helped elect Trump, but also because free speech on social media prevents them from maintaining a stranglehold on the flow of information by allowing ordinary, uncredentialed serfs to challenge, question, and dispute their decrees or build a large audience that they cannot control. So that's what's going on with the whistleblower and the Senate testimony. Yes, it's great that she came forward. If Facebook and Instagram are bad for kids and they know it's bad for kids, but they push it anyway, they need to be held accountable. Also, 
We must always be on guard as to how the Democrats and the left use this information. Will they use it to make big tech more accountable and actually open things up to free speech and conservative voices? Or will the left use their power to make Facebook even more restrictive so that conservatives are completely shut out? I think I know the answer to that one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, next, let's talk about Kamala Harris. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you're like me, you're tired of seeing what's happening to America, with our side losing so many battles that we should be winning. Many times, this happens because we are unprepared for leftist dirty tricks and maneuvers. We need to understand who leftists are, how they operate, and most importantly, how to effectively fight them. And here's the book that explains how it's done. Rules for Defeating Radicals by Chris Adamo. Get your copy at Amazon using the link in the description. Okay, next we have Kamala Harris. And the question is, where is she? She has vanished. And it seems whenever there is a major issue going on with the Democrats, like dealing with the border crisis or the failure in Afghanistan, Harris is either hidden or shipped off to some other part of the world. There are major negotiations going on within the Democrat Party to try to salvage their massive spending bills, and she's not playing a role at all. Here's the story. Vice President Kamala Harris has been mostly missing in action during the spending talks on Capitol Hill, renewing questions over her role in the Biden White House and her overall effectiveness as the commander-in-chief's sidekick. There was just one event on Ms. Harris's public calendar on Tuesday, a virtual event with the Democrat National Committee in which she tried to ramp up enthusiasm for next year's midterm elections. That actually cracks me up. The person that gets sent to drum up enthusiasm for the Democrats is Kamala Harris. She's their go-to cheerleader. But maybe that's the only role left for those in charge who have no confidence that she can do anything else. Here's more. On Monday, Ms. Harris visited a Cuban cafe in Washington and over the weekend, she escaped to Palm Springs, California, for what the White House billed as a private family matter. President Biden, meanwhile, has leaned in, mounting an aggressive public relations campaign that he hopes will help salvage his push for massive investments in transportation and a social agenda, as well as tax hikes on the rich to pay for it all. Joe Biden is trying to salvage his domestic agenda. Everything is crumbling around him. Keep in mind that the Democrats control everything. They don't need Republican support. Nothing is getting done because the Democrats are tearing each other apart. And Harris, she's off taking private trips and visiting cafes. As the story notes, many Democrats are in disarray regarding Harris. Some see her as the heir apparent to Biden in the next election. Others realize that any task she's given is usually made worse by her comments. I'm here in Guatemala today I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I, mean, I don't I don't understand the point that you're making. Hmm. Maybe that's why we're not seeing Kamala Harris. Trust me, I'm not complaining, but I don't know what is worse or who is worse. Biden or Harris? All I know is that we need them out in 2024. All right, so next we have another example of the woke radical left and their push to transform public schools into some kind of laboratory for the left. Talk show host Megyn Kelly noted on her show on Tuesday that the all boys school that she was sending her son to has stopped referring to the children as sons or boys. It's an all boys school. But because there are no longer boys and girls, but a million fluid genders out there, according to the left, that means we can't call boys boys anymore. Yep, the word boys is now offensive. Here's Kelly. But one of the parents recognized this during like a grade wide Zoom and called up one of the administrators after the fact to say, is this is this by design? Right. Like I've, I've noticed the absence of son or boy and the guy owned it. He claimed he inherited it from the previous uh, head of school, which is a lie. Uh, he owned it. They're, they're not going to call the boys boys anymore at one of the oldest and most prestigious boys K through 12 schools in the country. This is just insane. An all boys school that won't use the word boys because that doesn't fall in line with the leftist woke agenda. 
The left wants to strip away anything that brings people together, like faith, family, freedom, patriotism, and even a word like boys, which unites boys, is taboo. Kelly's guest was author and professor Victor Davis Hanson, and he responded with this. Yeah, it's almost unbelievable because we all grew up with the idea that the Chinese Maoist system or the Russian system where you had you could no longer call anybody anything other than comrade. Everybody became a comrade. Or in the Chinese system, when you embarrass somebody, you wore a cone and you sat in the corner where everybody laughed at you. You were an enemy of the people. Why would we why would we emulate these systems? Everyone is a comrade, so that no one is an American. That's the goal to bring down the freest, most open country in the world. The left has been working at it for decades, and look how far they've come. Women are replaced by birthing people, and an all-boys school won't use the word boys. The only thing stopping this is us. We must continue to fight back despite the threats and intimidation that come from Joe Biden and the rest of the radical left. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, but don't forget, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search out my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. One special note, this Saturday on our Saturday live stream, I'll be interviewing author, PR expert, and Newsmax host, Allison Maloney. Our next regular show is going to be Friday evening at the usual time, 6.30 p.m. Central. Until then... I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13 minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13 minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here and I'll see you next time.